So we're at day seven of our bacterial plating experiment. So let's take a look and see what our plates are showing us. The first plate we're going to look at is our positive control, which if you remember, this was our sink drain. And well, this is just disgusting. <laughs> you see multiple types of bacteria as evidenced by the multiple colors and different textures of the bacteria. You also in the edges can see mold forming and you know that it's mold because it has that fuzzy appearance to it. Here we have our hands one plate, which if you remember, this is the swabbing of my son's hands prior to him washing them. Uh, usually when microbiologists are describing the plates, they refer to the color. They'll also refer to the texture and whether a colony looks like it glistens or is it more of a creamy consistency. While you cannot identify the specific type of bacteria from its growth on a bacterial plate, you are able to tell from these differences that you have different bacterial colonies forming. Interestingly, you go next to the dollar bill and the colonies are very similar to what we saw on the hands one. You'll see this as well with the next plate, which is the video game controller. Again, think about a dollar bill and a video game controller. Really, the primary source of bacteria on this will be the hands that are touching it. So it would make sense that the colonies and the bacteria that you isolate from these would be similar. So next, we're going to take a look at the cell phone. Here you'll see multiple colonies as well. You have one very large bacterial spot that's sort of an off-white color. You also see a small red spot, which indicates that this could be a, another type of bacteria that lives on this particular cell phone. University of Arizona did a study, and they actually found that cell phones can carry up to 10 times more bacteria than in their experiment, they compared it to a toilet seat cover. Think about how many times restrooms are cleaned and compare that to how many times you're actually wiping down your cell phone. I know, it's really, really gross, but... If that doesn't change your behavior, I don't know what will. The typical bacteria that are found on these cell phones include streptococcus, uh, staphylococcus as well. Um, they have even seen fecal coliforms. Okay, moving on to something slightly less disgusting. We swabbed Audrey's teeth and you can see on this plate that there is some bacteria forming. This has the potential to be Streptococcus mutans. And if you saw our previous video where we actually talk about the different types of bacteria and what they look like, we know that Streptococcus mutans is one of the bacteria that can cause cavities. Looking at the yogurt plate, we see that there is actually a contaminant on this plate. It looks like some, some type of mold is growing on there. And we know that it's a contaminant because it's outside the streak area from the initial swabbing that we did. And finally, in our last image, we're looking at a comparison of both the hands one and the hands two plate. So if you remember, we swabbed my son's hands, he went and washed them, and then we swabbed again after washing, and that's the hands two plate. In the hands two plate, you do notice there's a little bit of condensation there forming, but if you can see beyond that, there are some colonies in there. And my hypothesis here is that when my son, after he washed his hands, he blew them dry from his mouth. Now we know that the mouth contains a lot of bacteria, so I'm wondering if maybe by blowing his hands dry, some of that bacteria got back onto his hands, and that's what we're seeing here. So in a future experiment, what might be interesting is you can plate dirty hands, wash those hands, and then look at different methods of drying them to see if there are cleaner versus dirtier methods of drying. Perhaps blowing them dry with your mouth, using a paper towel, or using a cloth towel. I want to leave you with some information that I found through the National Science Foundation, who did a study similar to this. They found that the three factors that will determine a surface's potential for harboring germs and bacteria, the type of surface that it is, the temperature, and the moisture level of it. Non-smooth, so rough surfaces, and the example they gave was a, a cafeteria tray, warm and moist areas, those tend to create the best conditions for growing bacteria. So when you see different surfaces like that, it's always good to wipe them down and just do some extra cleaning on them. I hope you found this enjoyable. Feel free to comment below and give us your thoughts. Thank you for watching.